So England have just announced their squad for the Ashes Tour of Australia and it contains 16 players and has been published all around the various cricket media sites. And on first impression, it looks very weak, very soft, very, very inexperienced, and very troubling. So, when I think about the two teams as they currently stand, Australia is clearly the superior team. They've got a better group of players. They're in better form. And they've got much more of a coherent group together. But England haven't been doing that bad over recent times. And so I always felt that if a really good England came over to Australia for this summer, for the Ashes, that we were going to see some really good cricket and England were going to provide a good contest. But now, looking at this squad, I'm not so sure. Remember that England brought an amazingly experienced, talented and world-class squad to Australia in 2013-14. But, for various reasons, things did not click into place, they did not build up good momentum, and they got absolutely demolished in the Test Series against the likes of Mitchell Stark, Mitchell Johnson, and Nathan Lyon. And now, England have brought along a squad that is far less experienced despite the fact that they've had four years to build this team up. So, who is in this squad? So, the old dogs are still there. James Anderson, Stuart Broad, and Alastair Cook. These players have been around for more than ten years. They've played over a hundred tests. They have been to Australia many times, are both successful and otherwise. They have dominated over Australia, and they have been humiliated by Australia over the years. So, we've got those three. Then we have... Then we have the current crop of the cater of the New England team, which are the Captain Joe Root, Johnny Bairstow, Moeen Ali and the vice captain Ben Stokes. These players have been around for about four or five years. They've got a lot of good performances under their belt. They've had to struggle through the early parts of their career. They've had to really work through troubles. Like Johnny Bairstow was dropped, Joe Root was dropped, Moeen Ali had lots of troubles. Ben Stokes had a very poor start to his test career where he kept going out for ducks. And so they've though that cater is really going to be the forefront of the England team in this test series. And as for the remaining spots in the squad, they are pretty much all occupied by people who have played either no tests, they're either uncapped, or they have played less than te 10 test matches. Which is remarkable, considering that they've had nearly 50 or 45 test matches since the defeat of the Ashes four years ago, and yet they have not built up other players to fill in those gaps. Now, some of this is to do with injuries which are unavoidable. So. Steve Finn, who would clearly be the third seamer behind Anderson and Broad, is 
injured and can't play, and they've decided that Mark Wood is just too much of a risk considering his recent series of injuries, and so they're not taking him. And so they've decided to bring in a series of very inexperienced seam bowlers to make up the rest of the squad. And they haven't chosen someone like Liam Plunkett or Tim, Tim Bresnan, who could have been a more experienced hand. Um, the best of the bowlers is Roland Jones, so he'll probably take up the third spot. But other than that, like if, if someone gets injured, if James Anderson or Stuart Broad gets injured, then England are in for a world of trouble. Another issue is the upper order batting. So it has now been five years since Andrew Strauss retired. And in that time, England still do not have a replacement opener partner for Alastair Cook. And they have been chopping and changing continuously in the last five years, and including silly little experiments like Joe Root and Moeen Ali. And then when they actually bring in a proper opener, they only give him a certain number of chances. And if he fails, then they just banish him to the county circuit and he's never heard from again. And so, currently it looks like it'll be Stoneman who will be opening the batting with Alastair Cook, and he has only played a handful of test matches over the summer, over the English summer, and he has not scored a century, and in fact, his batting average is very low, and he's totally untested in terms of what he can do. The decision to bring back James Vince, who only played a handful of test matches as well and didn't score many runs and has a test match batting average in the 20s, is another problem. Like, if they wanted James Vince in this Ashes squad, they should have played him the entire summer. Not leave him in the county circuit and then suddenly recall him back when all the test matches with the West Indies and South Africa are over. James Vince does not have test match preparation, and he's coming into an Ashes series. Next is the wicketkeeper problem. Now, Johnny Bairstow, of course, is the English wicketkeeper, and he's really amazing. He's in great form, he's overcome his troubles, and he looks like a really great international cricketer. But they've decided to bring an uncapped player to be the rep his understudy. an uncapped wicketkeeper as Bairstow's understudy, which means that they've decided to not bring Josh Butler along for the tour. And it's a very strange thing to do to bring a totally unknown uncapped wicketkeeper to play this role. And they're just they've got to be thinking that Bairstow will play all five test matches and this young kid will be just there to, for the experience. But perhaps the most egregious sin that England have committed is the decision to not bring a front-line spinner on their tour squad. They have two spinners. They have Moeen Ali and then they have an uncapped leg spinner who averages 42 in first class cricket deciding not to bring Adul Rashid or Gareth Batty or anyone else and that seems like just a remarkable piece of stupidity just compare can when you when you think about Nathan Lyon and all that he has accomplished over the last four or five years, the way that he has turned himself into becoming a match winner on Australian soil. The thinking must have been, we have to find someone like Navin Lyon who can control the game, who can get extra bounce off the pitch, who can have a real attacking set field set, a real attacking field 
and yet they've decided to bring Moeen Ali, who is perfectly a perfectly good spinner, but he's not a match winner. Um, the only major hauls of wickets that he's ever taken have been against Bangladesh and when India tried to slog him out of the attack. When he is treated a bit more seriously and batsmen try to play him out, he does not take that many wickets because he's not able to really do the great off-spin things of getting dip and bounce and so on. And so Moen Ali averages in the high 30s in test cricket with the ball, which is very fair. I think that is about accurate as to how good of a bowler he is. But how can Moen Ali be the number one spinner for an English team when they're going to be in Australia, when the pitches will be flat, there'll be very little seam or swing, and trying to... and it'll be so, so important to slow down the scoring, to change the momentum of the game, to control the game, to stop batsmen getting out of hand and to try to get them to make little mistakes which get wickets bat pad and caught behind off the spinners. It just seems so remarkable that they have not brought someone like Adil Rashid who is capable of doing that number one frontline spinner role.